Crystal Palace fan for my sins, so uh, there's several Palace players that really stand out for me. Uh, Jim Cannon, Mickey Droy, Vince Solaire, I used to love watching him, you know, what a player. And then slightly after that was Wright and Bright. But for me, it's probably always one player for England who stood out. Um, Brian Robson used to love his energy, the way he got stuck in, the way he was sort of a box-to-box -box player. Um, you know, used to get injuries because he just used to, you know, give it everything. And I, lo I just loved watching him play for England. So um, he is, apart from a Palace players, he's probably the one standout for me that I, I really remember. I used to go uh, to Palace uh, with my dad, uh, standing on my homestyle road uh, when it was all standing terraces. Um, used to get a box for me sometimes, I used to stand up there. Um, and it was just, I just fell in love with the atmosphere, the, the excitement mm. of it all. Um, and it really, you know, it, it really, really was great to watch. And, you know, I went through season ticket with my friends when I was secondary school. Um, and then sort of, I've always, a team is always in your blood once you support them. You think of the word terraces, what comes to mind? Oh, terraces, you, you used to lean up. I mean, one of the great things is when a goal was scored and there's this movement forward. Um, and they seem more, you seem closer and there was more togetherness. Um, I mean, obviously and quite rightly, terraces were replaced um, but yeah there, there used to be you, you just felt felt closer and you know part of a group and uh, yeah as I say such fond memories of that so it's like kind of a family like a tribe kind of thing oh yeah, completely completely mm. and I you know supporting a club it is very mm. tribal mm. Um, and you know for me there was always you know it was me and my dad Mm. And, you know, we'd be standing with his friends and I'd be there. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the football is very tribal. Football that is very tribal and uh, I, I love that side of things. So when did you set your heart on being a football coach? Um, honestly, I had no great plans to. It, it kind of happened. So I've got uh, two boys. Um, my eldest didn't show any interest in football and I think it was oh, World Cup and it was around that time he just came back with a leaflet um, in his bag for football and he said oh, I wouldn't mind doing this dad and um, that's what first made me go um, there was um, a couple of coaches doing it but one in particular uh, Matthew who's actually the chairman of Forest out now that's where I first met him and he started coaching and I, I couldn't help myself. I, I you know, got involved, I was trying to give him a hand in everything and um, that's when I first realised, oh, I could quite enjoy this. Um, although it was very much, you know, Matthew doing the coaching at that time, I, I was always, well, I'm never shy in giving my opinion on, on things and uh, helping people and certainly kids. I feel I have a good connection with kids. When you get in a six-yard box, shoot. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. But um, and it was probably at that point I first got into it, and then my uh, William, my youngest son, it was a couple of years behind, and you know I I then started managing and helping to coach his team, um, and once I had a season of that on my own, um, I, I, I really was. I want to do this properly. How would you compare being a footballer today and being a footballer back in the day? So I'm not about professional teams yeah. and professional league. I'm not about just you know local team football. How would you compare the organisation of the local teams to what it's like today? Um, I I, I think it has changed. Um, I think you know however long it goes, I don't care to think how many many years ago it was um, the kids used to uh, you know ha have a Sunday side um, 
And I think kids used to stay with, with the teams for longer. Um, I think there were less coaches who were qualified, um, helping those kids, developing those kids. Uh, it very much used to be a parent uh, doing it, um, who knew a bit about football. It didn't seem to be these uh, academies around. So, you know, you had your one team, but these days there's so many more opportunities. You don't have to stick to one team, you know. You, you can play for a team on a Sunday. I know kids then play for a different team on a Saturday and maybe do a couple of, you know, different academies as well as their school. So kids can be playing a lot more football uh, than, than, than we used to, I think. Whereas we used to play in the street or over the park, um, it seems to be more organised uh, now. So uh, that, that's, I think, access to coaches was one of the big differences now as to how it was uh, sort of 25, 30 years ago. What kind of impact is COVID-19 having on grassroots football? Oh, horrible impact! Horrible impact. Um, it. I mean, I could, you know, first of all, I can speak as a parent that has my son lost interest. He's, he's certainly gained a lot more interest in his um, uh, game consoles uh, than he has football. And I, I hate seeing kids at the weekend not doing anything. You know, me, it's, you know, part of football for me is the social side. I think that's really important for the kids, you know, meeting with different kids that are outside of their school friends and learning to interact with another group and, you know, a group who all have the same passion. Um, and, and it's such a shame they're missing out on that. You know, it, again, my, my, my youngest son has started secondary school and, you know, whereas it's usually a big thing, or can you get in the football team? There's nothing. Um, so it, it, it's such a shame. I, I do think I do think they're missing out on a lot. Um, but you know, they, it, it's, I'm, I'm afraid it, it's part of life. A, a lot of people are missing out on a lot of things right now. Um, so you have to look at it with context. But um, as a coach, as, as a referee, I, I just. Me personally, I want to be out there, and I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a real shame for the kids. I, I really do. You're working on quite a special project at Warbank, some young coaches. How did it all come together? Um, well, I, I'd, I'd love to take all the credit, and I, I certainly won't because um, you know that's down to our chairman um, Matthew and his, I think, vision. Uh, desire. Um, we, we started up, we, we we were with a team, uh, with an old team and let's say me and Matthew didn't feel the secretary and chairman were, uh, maybe had the same vision, um, certainly as Matthew did. So we decided to set up our own club uh, back in 2016 uh, called uh, Forest Out FC. Um, and he started off as chairman, I started off as secretary. And, you know, we started, I think, was it two teams or was it three teams? I, I can't remember, but, but maybe just a, a couple of teams. Um, but I think Matthew always had that vision. And we come from generations, so, you know, Matthew's about 20 odd years behind me in age. And I, you know, I was very much, you know, I was a dad taking over the team. I very much wanted to be like my old club was when I was growing up. You know, you all stay in one team, a dad takes it. Very much the, the parents are as much a part of it. Um, but I think Matthew's taken that on and he, he's really, he's so passionate about kids' development and actually developing their skills. Um, and you know it, it it's amazing so he has you know I, I, I helped start the club with him you know I'm very good but I think it's been his vision and how he is taking it on and I just I, I look now at where we are with how many teams you know I'm, I'm sure we've got 10 teams roughly I, I might be guessing there um, so from where we started to where we are now, 
uh, it, it, it is a special project, and, and you know, and, and Matthew is leading us through that. Um, I, and I would do anything I can to help, but it's it, it's just great when you go up to Warbank on a, on a Sunday morning, um, and you see all these kids playing football. Um, and on a Friday night, all these kids under the floodlights training, it, it, it's just, it, it's wonderful to be able to give the kids the opportunity to do that, you know, and Warbank is a lovely, I, I just, yeah, I, I think it's absolutely great. And I think, I know absolutely, for me, being able to give a community an option, because obviously we know that there's a lot of issues that we find, kids at risk of crime, all sorts of things. And to be able to give those kids an option, I think that, that's just, that's an amazing thing to do at any level, really. Yeah, completely agree. Okay, so what may motivate someone to be a football coach? Is it purely financial? I couldn't imagine uh, that would be the case. It certainly wasn't uh, for me. Um, I, you know, I look at, I, I, I look at the young coaches first of all um, and you know they are getting a, a, a bit of a financial contribution so it, it's like a little part time job but then you see them and you see their passion and how good they are with the kids um, and the smiles on their faces you know it, it, it's more than that uh, I believe there, there are ways to make money out of it um, you know, if you have a desire, you can take it, you can get further qualifications, you can set up your own academy. Uh, there, there are things you can do to make money out of it, but I, I never get the feeling that that's why people start it. Um, I truly believe people become a coach because they have a passion for football. Um, yeah. Football is a gateway to a better life for working class people. Yet we see a number of black players, but very few black coaches on our screens. Why is that, you think? Um, difficult question. Difficult question. Um, I'm not convinced I'm the right person to answer it. I think, you know, there, there has been a, a lot of talk about uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, in 2020, and I, I, I think that's absolutely fantastic um, I, I, I'm not sure I can tell you you know I work with Matthew very closely I work with uh, Nathaniel who's one um, who's an, an amazing absolutely amazing coach such he's got a great future ahead of him uh, a, a Cora who um, is also the secretary um, so there are the opportunities there, but I think they've really made those opportunities through the desire, through their own desire. I, I, I'm not sure how easy it is for black people to forge a career in that, and, and it's such a shame. And I would also say the same for um, females as well. Um, but I'm, you know, it's really proud that Forestdale. You, you, you can have a look and I, I think it, it truly is diverse up there, uh, both in the, the children playing um, and, and also the coaches. So that is wonderful to see, but I would agree you don't necessarily see that throughout kids football, um, which is something I hope will change in time. Um, it can change in time, uh, but I think everybody's you know, got to be behind that, the, the, the FA have got to truly believe in it, not just have some, uh, you know, uh, racism campaign, uh, it, it's, it's the actions that count, isn't it, what, 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 what they actually do and how that is made to happen for people to go into that. Um, but I do believe Matthew has, you know, Forestdale does have that environment where if you're a young black coach and you're wanting to get into football, there is that opportunity there. Well, you know, you talk about these young coaches and obviously no yeah. one, not everyone knows who they are, Matthew yeah. and Nathaniel, these are empty black coaches. 
And you talk about them in such an inspirational way. But at the end of the day, they kind of see you as the inspiration behind the club just as much as anything else. They, they're inspired by you. How do you feel about that? Wonderful. Um, you know, that, that makes me feel really good because you, you hope you set, you know, I believe there, there should be role models uh, for people. Um, and I, I, I believe that I can be a role model for players, uh, parents and coaches. So to hear that is it, absolutely great. Um, it really is. What would you say is the best age for a player to get into football? And is that your preferred age to coach? Now that, that's, that's a question. Um, so my preferred age to coach, I absolutely love coaching the under sixes to under nines. There's, there's such a purity about it. They, they, you know, they come in, you, you, know, you know the kids that genuinely want to do it. Um, and there's just such a joy about their football and there is so much you can teach them at that age. Um, you know, you're setting them up for the rest of their football career. You're helping them fall in love with the game. Um, and I really find that a, a, a big honour. Um, I, I really do. You know, as to the best time for kids to start football, uh, the earlier the better. But I, I think there's also the kids have to be ready as well so again i think i refer back to my younger son who was um he didn't show any interest in football up until the age of about i think six seven um and i never ever forced it with him um and now he you know and he really enjoyed uh, playing so I, I think there's that balance the earlier the better but the kid also has to be ready and showing that interest as well. Everyone seems to be desperate to get their kids into academies. Would you say they offer a better choice than local clubs? Not necessarily. It would depend on the academy. Um, I think the word academy is used too much and sets a certain expectation uh, for parents. That isn't necessarily uh, a correct. Um, Anyone can call their football school uh, an academy, um, and I think yeah, well, that that that's one of the big problems that it sets. It can set kids and parents up to a, a, a bit of a fault, um, and I think it's a shame to see where it's you know Forest South Football Club. I would I, I would look at them and I'd say actually we. With the coaching we have, we are as good as a lot of academies out there. We really are. And, and I think, you know, our, our coaches have qualifications, but I, I think Matthew is, he always, you know, the club want the right coaches in, the ones that have that real passion uh, for football. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really do think, you know, a local football club on a Sunday can offer as good or better um, facility, well, coaching as academies. What advice can you offer to young players who have often been sidelined by their clubs? Some of them having started playing from the age of five years old. I um, absolutely hate uh, to see that. Um, I think it's. I think it's about the ethos of a club. Um, if it truly is about developing players and not winning, um, then I think that shouldn't happen as much. And it may be that actually, sometimes you have to for the kid to enjoy football, make sure they're playing at the right level. Um, so I guess it, it, it depends on what sideline looks like. Uh, you know, after five years to say to a kid, I'm really sorry you're not good enough for this team, bye-bye, um, I think is absolutely wrong. Um, and I would really hope that very rarely happens. Um, because what you should be doing 
is you should be developing that kid. So you have a team, and grassroots grassroot coach, uh, coaches have such small amount of time with their players. But if there if there is a player who is struggling in a certain department, then help them in some way. Um, don't just put them to the side and get a better player in, because because that's not what it's about. Um, I love to see teams where kids are of you know around similar ability. They're playing as a team. They're enjoying their football. Um, you know, I'm all, I'm also one, and I'd also. Yeah, I could talk about this all day, but those kids uh, who have been sidelined, I'd always want to know, well, how much game time have they been given compared to the better players? You know, so are those better players getting more game time than the one who actually probably needs more game time? Um, and, and that's always been one of my things with my teams is that my kids will get fair playing time. Um, so you know, as I, I've made a guarantee to every single one of my kids, they are playing at least ha half an hour every game, and, and they're all treated the same. Um, so yeah, it's um, my advice to those kids then would be uh, go and find a coach who wants to help you, that isn't worried about winning, that is doing it because it's for the enjoyment of a game. Positive in possession. Open your mouths and enjoy the game. You're being tested again against a team a higher division than you. So let's have the same performance. Well done, boys. Mental health seems to be a real issue for young people today, especially with COVID-19. Can you see any way that football can be a benefit to people struggling with mental health? Oh, uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I'm speaking one uh, as, as a person who uh, was diagnosed with depression in, uh, I think, back in 2017. Um, so for me, again, it's something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, and I think that's... So for football, you, you can just see the kids getting together and the joy in their faces. I, I could. I, I remember from the first breakdown, that first session back, and you know, I, I sort of said, "Well, I'm not I'm, to myself. I'm not going to do anything. Just let them play a game." And, and that has been one of my most enjoyable training sessions that I've done. And, and that's where you can see. Well, that that's why I do football. Big smiles on faces. Um, but that that's again the social and so psychological side of things, which. Uh, are so so important to kids um, you know they're, they're with their friends they're doing something they enjoy it, it's getting them out of the house it, it's getting them in the outside um, again that competitiveness uh, trying to win it, it, there's just so many good things to come out of it and uh, yeah, that, that, that is obviously the, one of the big worries, the worries about the legacies of COVID-19, the, the mental health. Um, so I think it's important as a, you know, as a coach that you look out for those signs, um, that you're not just worried about the next game and doing a training session, you know, you're really taking notice of uh, each and every individual, how they're reacting and then hopefully offer any help if you can you know luckily because of my experiences with depression I, I am able to offer a bit of um, guidance and support and maybe have a bit of understanding uh, about it so it may be a bit easier for me to see any signs in young children yeah.